Hey everyone, welcome back to another video. In today's ultra politically correct society, we need to change certain terms and certain words to mean, well, something different, something else, because apparently you have people out there that are so offended by a certain term, it uh, makes them buckle at the knees. So nowadays, I believe it was recently I saw it some part in the US, right? You're not allowed to say criminal anymore because that's a two, believe it or not, too offensive to the actual criminal. I forgot the, the term that they actually use instead of criminal. You guys can look it up if you want. And also in today's day and age, for some reason, you have to refer to, well, I'm not going to, but apparently if you are in a ultra politically correct town or you meet people that want you to use this terminology, then you're kind of stuck, aren't you? But I won't do it. So the term pedophile is rightfully used and rightfully so. These people are absolute creeps. But some people out there want you to say minor attracted persons because it's too offensive to say pedophile. The absolute disgusting people that take away child's innocence. But I'm not going to have it. And these people actually are trying to make it out like it is a sexual attraction. So therefore, it is right for a man to do that to an innocent child. Yes, there are those sick people out there. Then we have all these other terms that are thrown around like this grinds my gears and makes me incredibly angry. So bear with me while I try and get it out of my mouth. Sis. I'm not sis anything. Thank you very much. I am a man, just a man. Thank you. I'm going to put sis in front of it and every single person that does. God help you, really, seriously. And all these other people that say transgender women are women and everything else alike, well, that just goes to show you the ultra politically correct society that we're living in. And the reason why I'm saying all this is because, well, the Canadian Cancer Society has apologized for not calling cervix, which is what every single woman has. Now, are they going to now label it as front hole instead in non-binary disclaimer? So these apparent non-binary people, whatever the hell that means, don't feel comfortable with saying cervix. Now, are they going to use the derogatory term instead, front hole? So they're going to refer to something that every single woman has and is actually incredibly useful for every single woman. They're just going to label it as a front hole. It has no meaning whatsoever except that it's just a hole not going to say the actual term here. They're just going to refer to it as a whole. I mean, goodness me. I mean, if you are a non-binary individual, you say that you don't identify as being male or female. So why in the world do you really care whether or not someone says cervix, which is the actual correct terminology, I'll have you know. But alas, in today's day and age, you're not allowed to say cervix anymore because it offends people. I mean, goodness me, I'm getting sick and tired of the level of victimhood status mentality that this society is producing. It's really outrageous and, and rather concerning. And especially you have a Canadian cancer, can, cancer society. Why are they apologizing? They should know better. You have women that have cervical cancer. That is a legitimate thing. Not front hole cancer. That doesn't know. No, thank you. That doesn't work. But it's not derogatory to use front hole for real women. No, 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 no. We've got a panda to the small little minority group that has an extremely loud voice and gets upset by the word cervix. On a web page dedicated to cervical cancer, the Canadian Cancer Society is apologizing for referring to the cervix by its technical name rather than euphemisms such as front hole. I don't know about you. I don't even have a cervix, but that kind of offends me on behalf of women. And I know women probably don't like me saying that, but still, if you're a woman, I know what you're going to comment right now. It's really absurd. And I agree with you. The agency also conceded that men can have these body parts too. Well, that's news to me. I didn't know men can have a cervix. Did you? I didn't know men were able to carry children. Did you? 
well, they can't, spoiler alert, but according to the Cancer Society in Canada, these men can have these body parts too. Uh, here we go. Trans, non-binary and gender diverse people face significant barriers to accessing healthcare. Well, if you're a man, you're not even going to have to worry about cervical cancer. You don't even have to get that checked because you don't have a cervix. But I identify as a woman, so that means I identify as having all their body parts as well. Good grief. This whole nonsense about non-binary and gender diverse people, they're facing significant barriers to healthcare. The kind of healthcare that you guys want, it's going to destroy you, not help you. But they, they see it as healthcare and are less likely than, here we go, here's a derogatory term for you, cisgender people. We're just people. We're cisgender we're not trans, non-binary. No, we're cisgender. Get off the grass, man. Talk about lunacy just unfolding right before my very eyes. This is very hard to actually get out. To be screened for cancer, wrote the Canadian Cancer Society in a page on cervical cancer screening for LGBTQ whatever people. So I guess it's different for regular people like regular women that actually have a cervix. So you're going to actually say to them, oh, you you have cervical cancer, not a front hole. So you're going to be respectful to them, but, or what? So you're just going to pander to this small little minority group that is completely upset. In a words matter section on the organization's official website, the Canadian Cancer Society, I mean, what, an, what a choice of words, Canadian Cancer Society, atoned for the facts. Oh, they atoned, did they? That some, some, not all, some non-binary and transgender people might find the term cervix offensive and prefer to use the term front hole. What is the difference, front hole versus cervix? I know front hole is quite universal, isn't it? Cervix actually pertains to the likes of women. So therefore, you are actually acknowledging that by trying to remove the term. Well, there you go, people. Now you can throw it back into their face. So that you have to refer to it as front hole to refer to female genitalia. So if they're even using the terminology female. You can't get away with it, man. You can't get away with it. doesn't matter how, how often you try and... Uh, dumb down or remove certain terms and try and change it to your own stupid term. You can't escape it, man. We recognize that many trans men and non-binary people may have mixed feelings about or feel distance from words like cervix. You may prefer other words such as front hole. We recognize the limitations of the words we've used while also acknowledging the need for simplicity. What's <laughs> cervix is one word. Front hole is two words, man. The need for simplicity. So front hole is more simple than cervix, is it? Jeez, didn't know that. So here is the words matter bit that I uh, read out just a moment ago. We've got to normalize the reality that men can have these body parts too. I, I don't know about you, but. We don't have to normalize stupidity and idiocy, idiocy, idiocy. And people that are just so dumb, like they don't deserve to say anything like this. It's just stupid. But alas, I'm the dumb one for not being inclusive enough. <laughs> Good grief. Never thought I'd be living in this day and age, but here I am. True North reached out to Canadian Cancer Society for comment, but did not receive a response. Yeah, I wonder why that is. Women's rights activists argue that the terminology is both objectifying and derogatory. Indeed it is. They are 100% accurate. Just leave the term as it is, because guess what? Every single woman has a cervix. It's a biological fact. Just use the term. Who cares if someone is offended? If they are walking into the office and they don't have a cervix, they've got nothing to worry about. But they identify 
So therefore they should be worried, right, Jay? No, no, you shouldn't. You should be kicked right out. And secondly, why in the world are you taking up space for a woman that needs to get her cervix checked so that she doesn't have legitimate cancer? Or you're taking up her spot and her time because you identify as that. Goodness me. And these medical doctors are just going, oh, we need to be kind. We need to be all inclusive. No, if a woman is there, it's not a very, it's not a very nice thing to have it checked. I mean, I'm not a woman and I've never had to go through it, but I've heard horror stories. Like it's not a nice thing, but these men want to get off on it. And the doctors are just delusional, so they go along with the madness. British gender critical writer Julie Birchall accused LGBT activists of erasing women by adopting the terms. Exactly what they're doing. Both bonus hole and front hole are recommended as trans friendly alternatives to vagina. I've spoken about those terminologies before. Trans ideologues have long tried to erase or appropriate any word that is specific to females. From woman to mother and now vagina. Or oh, it's a uh, parent now. Can't say mother or father. It's just parent. It's too offensive to say otherwise. And they have gained a foothold in our schools and in our media. Now gynecological health providers are swallowing the stupid pills too. Yes. Exactly what I said a moment ago. Too dumb. They shouldn't even be in a medical practice if they're saying that a man has a cervix. To go back to woke school and stay in woke school. Don't graduate, man. Stay there because we don't want you anywhere near the medical institution. Help it or trying to help, I should say, individuals because you're not. Uh, the term front hole and bonus hole have been popularized by LGBT, whatever activists, as replacement for the biological term biologically correct term vagina in 2022 controversial or controversy erupted after the Boston children's hospital used the term other organizations dedicated to women's health have also adopted the offensive term a transgender male teen may still have a vagina he won't he won't call it a vagina he may use the term front hole or a different term said dr elizabeth bosky in a video by the hospital um so a transgender individual is going to refer to whatever they've got downstairs as a bonus hole or a front hole because it's too offensive to use vagina. I find vagina not offensive one bit and I find penis not offensive one bit, but I actually find bonus hole and front hole more offensive, believe it or not. But that's just me. I'm living in reality and sanity, thank you very much, and I don't like this oppressive nature and trying to change terms that have been used for the longest time and their actual biological terms. There's also medical terms, but why Why do we need to change them? Oh, because the little minority group is upset and they're unhappy. Who the hell cares? I certainly don't. Anyway, my friends, hope you enjoyed this one. You take care. You be blessed. I'll see you all in the next video.